you're working really hard at your business, you've been putting in some hours over an extended period of time, and for some reason you're still not making that much money from your company, you should evaluate if you're using the right business model. Today, I'm gonna to go into the top five factors that you should focus on to determine whether or not that you have a business model that is right for you. When I mean when I say business model that's right for you, is it going to make you money? Is it going to produce results? Is it going to make you happy? Is it going to give you everything that you imagined and more about operating within a business? So I want to share something with you real quick. I want to give you a very strong book recommendation. This is one of the most powerful books that I've ever read pertaining to business. This book has been a complete game changer. It's called The Millionaire Fast Lane. This book was written by one of my business mentors named MJ DeMarco. And the things that I got out of this book, it really started to cut the light bulb on in my head about how to go from being a side hustler that wanted a business to building an actual business that I could live off of and make some real money. So I want to share with you one of the things that it says right here at the top of the book because I could vouch for this book very strongly. It says, you'll learn more in two days from this book than you will learn in two years of business college courses. And it's one hundredth of the price. Now I'm going to show you guys something. I'm holding in my hand my bachelor's degree from one of the top 100 universities in the world. Okay? Proud alumnus. I spent $100,000 to get this sheet of paper. I spent, I want to say maybe about $15 to get this. This, what I learned in this book, was more important for my success up to this point than this. Okay? $100,000. $15. This is where it's at. And I want to go over just a small portion of some of the things that I learned after going through this book. How do you know if you need another business model? You got to apply the sense framework, okay? If it don't make dollars, it don't make sense. Sense. The first thing that you need to understand is, are you operating in a business that you control? You know, there's a lot of different entrepreneurs that rely on outside platforms to determine how much money they're going to make in a business. You've probably seen uh, different distributors of goods in Herbalife or other MLMs. You've probably seen people making money through Amazon, eBay, all of these different you know, online platforms with algorithms. But one of the biggest challenges in having a successful business is putting all of your eggs into a basket that you cannot control. When you don't control the platform that your business is operating off of, you put yourself at a very high liability because whenever the platform changes, you could be totally out of business. Like I know guys personally that went from making $40,000 a month on Amazon to making zero dollars, all because of the fact that the platform changed. Maybe they have new terms, new policies, new algorithm. You see that happening on Google all the time. You see that happening you know, on all of these social media platforms. Don't even get me going on Facebook. I went into one calendar year thinking that this was going to be the game-changing year of all years for me in entrepreneurship. I had studied so much about building a course from scratch, doing Facebook ads, optimizing your strategies, getting super excited and super worked up. Only to find that the very first day, once I ran that ad, my Facebook account had gotten blocked because unbeknownst to me, you can't put anything about student loans in any Facebook advertisement. And I wasn't even holding a course 
showing people about student loans. It was a course where I was just working with people for professional development. So it's all about what you control. See, because of the fact that I did not control Facebook ads, I went from thinking that I was gonna be making seven figures of income in that year to making zero from Facebook ads. I had to literally switch up my entire business plan and business model in order to come out with a new approach. When you don't control the platforms that you are on, it comes at a liability to you. The best way that you could be successful in a business is if you have 100% control of whatever it is that you're doing, okay? Let's talk about E, entry. How hard is it for a competitor to get into your business? You know, you see a lot of guys with YouTube videos. The barrier for entry is relatively easy. You could be a five-year-old and have a YouTube channel. But there are other facets of business that are a little bit harder to get down. You know, I build my business strategically so that not a lot of people can duplicate my efforts. That's one of the key factors to having a business that grows. If you're operating in a business where any fool off the street can do it, you're setting yourself up for failure. Because the minute that you go on the block making money and everybody sees it, everybody else is going to want to make money too. So they're all going to start doing the same thing. And if you make it super easy for everybody else to do, then guess what? They're going to do it <laughs> and you're going to be out of a business. So one of the things that you need to think about as you're coming up with your new business plan is how hard is it for an aspiring competitor to get into this in, uh, get into this industry and do what it is that I do. How hard is the barrier to entry to build what I am building? The harder the entry is, the better chance that you have at success. The easier the entry is, the more unlikely you are to be successful because everybody in the mama is doing it. Okay? Let's talk about in this is one of the most important things that so many entrepreneurs get wrong. When you start a business, you have to be satisfying a business need. I was on a call just yesterday with a couple brothers. You know, they were really excited about partnering together in a business and they were coming to me for advice on how to get started with this new innovation. They really had a good creative idea. But one of the things that really challenged a lot of the discussion that we were having was, is this something that people would be willing to pay for? There's no doubt that what you're doing could be of service, that what you're doing is innovative, what you're doing is something that people might benefit from having, but all of that means nothing if it doesn't solve a business problem. All of that means nothing if people don't feel enough pain in that area that they'll say, I'm going to take money out of my wallet and put it into your bank account because I have such a burning problem that only you can solve, you are going to get my last paycheck. Does your business actually address a solid business need? Now again, the better that you can address a solid business need, the better chance you have of being successful in business. Imagine you got the cure to cancer. I would think that you're going to have high demand in your business. But let's say you come out with something that nobody wants. Is it something that you think is a good idea? Nobody has validated it. Nobody has said to you, oh man, you know what? That's just what I needed. How much? Where do I get it? How do I get started? If nobody is using that language when it comes to whatever it is that you're pitching to them, 
you need to evaluate how you're doing on this inside of things because people will be real quick to say, oh yeah, you know, that's a good idea, man, that's cool. Keep up the good work. And they could have you gassed up thinking that you're about to go somewhere with that business idea. But if they're not pulling out their wallet and saying, how do I get this? You have not validated that you're actually addressing a business need. This is very important. You have to have all of these factors down in order to really have a solid business model that works, okay? If you wanna be competitive in this world. Lastly, um, second to last, T, time. A lot of startup entrepreneurs are working a job and calling it a business. Yeah, you've gotten out of your nine to five. Yeah, you don't have a boss that you report to, but you started down a path of an endeavor that really is just another job. It's not an actual business. Business means you can step away from it and money is still coming in. Business means you go on a one week vacation and people are still benefiting from the products and services that you have to offer and money is still coming into your bank account. If you're only making money once you are actively sitting down in a chair and working tirelessly at what it is that you're doing, you have failed in this time area. What all great entrepreneurs understand is that you have to build a business that does not trade time for money, okay? This is the reason why your systems are so important. This is the reason why you really have to think about, you know, having a team, having staff that could do things without it just being you. How much is your time wrapped into your business endeavors, okay? There are some entrepreneurs that are able to make a lot of money without putting in a lot of time, okay? You got to make sure you get this time thing down. Last but not least, scale. How scalable is your business? So let's say right now that you are planning to maybe get your own set of clients that you wanna work with. And you wanna start consulting people about a particular field. Well, you personally can only consult but so many people at one time. It's not necessarily scalable to the point where you're going to make millions off of just but a few people. See, this is not to say that you cannot run a successful consulting agency because there are people out there that have done it. This just means that you have to now go in with a solid and robust business model because if you go in into a business endeavor that by default is not structured for a lot of scale, that means that you're not really going to be able to grow to six figures, seven figures or beyond because you're going to be so busy working and having your time consumed just to get to four figures and five from the customers that you currently have, you don't have no time to get to six. Damn sure no time to get to seven. You're too busy locked up in four or five. How scalable is your business? When you can get these five things down, Pat, that's when you have a business model that's going to put you in rare air. That's when you're going to put yourself in a strategically aligned way to be able to get to financial independence. Some businesses are just better than others uh, in terms of their structure to be able to get a lot of financial success. Simple and plain. Not every business is the same. Not every dollar is the same. Some businesses make millions of dollars and they don't have to work that hard for it. Some businesses work 10 times as hard as multi-million dollar companies, but they're lucky to crack six figures, all right? So if you're having problems making money, you're working hard, or you're even thinking about starting your own business, make sure that you plug in this sense, framework, and methodology before you even get started. I wish I would have had this uh, in my back pocket before I started my business years ago, but boy, was I happy to have changed things around 
once I read the book. All right. So if you want to know more about how to be able to transition successfully out of your nine to five into your very own business that will give you the freedom to be able to travel the world, make money from home. Right. You see my business. I'm working from the comfort of my home. I'm a homebody at nature. I don't have to go to a boss. Then I want you guys to click the link in the description below or Click the link in the tab above, okay? Look at this card that's going up right now. Just go ahead and click that, and I'm going to show you all for free how to be able to successfully transition out of your 9 to 5 into a job that's based around doing the things that you want to do. Your business, <laughs> not a job, your business that's doing the things that you want to do so that way you can have more impact more fulfillment, more time, more freedom in your life, all right? Life is short. You don't have to go through life hating what you do for a living. And if you're going to spend so much of your adult life working, why not work at something um, that actually counts in your life, okay? Something that actually matters to you. Make sure that you check out this link. Get that free video. It's going to show you all the steps. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.